Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one in a best of three between Dinesta and Herobert in Herobert's Grand Tournament. So I'm going to be starting to cast from the quarterfinals of Herobert's Grand Tournament. It was a tournament that had 32 players to start. Each round was a best of three so you can just imagine how many games there were. Single elimination bracket though, so no lower bracket, but still absolutely tons to go through. That's why I'm starting in the corner finals. Also, the tournament started months ago, so many of the older replays are no longer supported by the special viewer or are very buggy in the special viewer. So um, that's why I've kind of avoided going all the way back to the very start. But coming into the quarterfinals today, we have Dinista and Herobert. And they've both come through two rounds already. Herob actually had to defeat Gallo Neal in the second round, so a very good opponent that he's already defeated. And Anesta had to defeat A. Lennart in round two as well. So both players certainly been tested up to this point, and now we get to see them go up against each other in a best of three. So on the allied side today, Dinesta is going to be using the first Pan Cerna, actually a division that Herr Robert's very familiar with, so make give him an, an advantage playing into it. But on the Axis side, Herr Robert's going to be using the 21st Panzer, and we are going to be seeing Comment Le Avant today. So, let's have a look at some of the units that are going down. I expect the 1st Panzerna over on the left side here um, to really make use of Cromwell 6s in the open areas, um, maybe assisted by the 1st Panzerna and so on. In the future but we can see that there is a Morris LRC here and the Stralsi with the six pounder further down it's going to be more Stralsi with command infantry one Stralsi for the mid Cromwell 6 joining on the bottom side with three more units of Stralsi recon and a AT gun there surprised to not see any command on the bottom side but I'm sure that will come in later on on the side of Herr Robert, we've got the U304 with a Panzer Grenadier there and the command on the top side, it's going to be a Panzer Habitzer and a couple units of Panzer Grenz so far. We'll come back to that one. Herr Robert has placed down more units. But this Panzer Habitzer could definitely do a lot of work in the center, especially assisted by something like an S307 pack. If that has anything like the Cromwell 6s or the Cromwell 5s to fire at, it can be extremely useful. So an S307 pack could definitely do work. But the Panzer Habits are there. That is basically like a 1,200 meter range HE unit, similar to a Cromwell 6. So that would be why that he's sort of pushing it to the mid here, because there is a lot of open ground that you can definitely definitely exploit uh, with that particular unit. Joining those on the top side are going to be another unit of uh, Panzer Grenadiers and the command, and it looks like an AT gun has also been chosen to be brought in. One issue that the 21st Panzer does have in Phase A is a lot of their units are pretty expensive. So getting yourself in a position where you're stabilized is pretty difficult in the early game. You've really got to basically send your expensive units to the right area of the map from the beginning in order to counter what your opponent is doing, and then you can work off that. But getting trades in the early game is really important for the 21st Panzer. Not so much for the uh, first Panzerna, however, since they rely quite a lot on cheaper units like the Strelzi, which makes them a bit more flexible, allows them to hold the front line forwards in multiple locations without having to risk too much. So in terms of a conquest game, the first Panzerna deals with it a lot better. But we are off, let's go and have a look at where these troops are going. We've got a lot of fast move and unload at position commands. You've got the Cromwell 6 heading right down to this bottom side with an attack move, going to be covering these hedgerows and tree lines as it continues forwards. It looks like the Panzer Habits is actually heading to the very top area. Going to be trying to cover this area, which isn't something that I would necessarily recommend as it's very hard to make ground through here. Not only because this is a choke and therefore you can get ambushed by AT guns all over the place here, but just because these tree lines make it very difficult to get decent shots into and therefore you can't really exploit the range of the Panzerhabitzer on that top side. 
but definitely a lot of unloaded position commands here with the uh, sort of move commands afterwards for the half tracks. You can't ever give queued orders to the infantry inside a half track, but you can give queued orders to the half track itself, and that's something that a lot of players make use of in order to get them into more strategic locations which help hold the front line forwards. Either way, Herr Roberts in a decent position down here. You can see he's going to be fast moving the U304 behind this tree line so that he has that there to kind of again hold this front line. U304, I think that's where the Pack 38 is going to be unloading it uh, towards this tree line. Can't actually see it on the back there because this is in the special viewer on the older patch. So this was when AT guns were invisible on the back of half tracks and so on. By the way, 222 opening up. The two, tar, two star 222 for the 21st Panzer can be absolutely brutal because it's quite a powerful weapon already, but with the sort of extra veterancy on top of that, it can be incredibly lethal against infantry. And there you can see it took a Straussy squad all the way, already down to four men straight off the bat. The Wielefachwerfer are going to be coming into this top side to assist. I'd like to see more aggression with the 222 though. If this Morris LRC has been spotted, then there's no reason really for the SBW222 to not go for that. I guess there is the chance that it's kind of covered by the six pounder, but we can see Hellobert now moving in that direction with the 222, going to be looking for that kill. Panzer Grenadiers on this bottom side, going to be trying to cover off against the Straussy as they move forwards. U304 going to be taking on the Universal Carrier. Cromwell 6 is trying to move up here. If he can get a shot into the Panzer Grenadiers, it could definitely make life difficult for Hellobert in the early game. And it looks like the shots are going to come in. Panzer Grenadiers will be forced to fall back at some point. And then the Strelzy get to match up quite nicely to the Panzer Grenadiers. And they will outnumber them as well. But an SDGFZ259 is on its way. Been a while since I've seen one of these used from the beginning of the game. But this will definitely help control a lot of the Strelzy. Also a Brimbeer on the way as well. The 222 going to be taking shots at the Universal Carrier, takes that out very nicely. Now could also look for the kill onto the Morris LRC, but is going to be pushing towards this Universal Carrier instead. This is exactly where the 6-pounder is though, so the 6-pounder might be able to take advantage of that. However, where exactly is that hitting? It looks like it's just smashing the middle of the forest. But if it ends up pinning the 6-pounder as well, the 222 could have a great time. Panzerhabitzer uh, has used up two of its AP shells trying to take shots at the Universal Carrier on the top side, but the HE is what you have it for. So not too bad. Panzer Grenadiers did manage to survive on this bottom side, but the half-track is now dead. Fieldfachwerfer fires away once again. Air Robert's really got to hope that that hits the mark onto this six-pounder. He doesn't know it's there yet, but we'll spot it with the Alphaclader when it comes into the edge of the tree line. The 222 might be able to get the jump onto the six-pounder, but I think it's quite likely that the six-pounder will get a shot off uh, before it gets pinned down itself. And since it's a two-star six-pounder, it will uh, likely get the job done. So let's see. Can he see it there? No, he cannot. Unfortunately, I think the Alphaclader was just out of line of sight really and the 222 goes down double hurricane going to be coming into the bottom side going for the strafe onto the Brimbeer great job though by the Panzer and Fjord and the Panzer Grenadiers though there to surrender one of the Strelsi which have not been assisted by command I did mention the lack of command on the bottom side early on it seems to already be affecting the Nester's play down here Six, uh, Cromwell 6 is uh, going for the shots onto the Brimbeer B59 now trying to get involved as well Six pounder is going to try and take a shot at this U304. Does manage to get a shot in there, but doesn't find the kill. Panzer Grenadier is now coming under fire from those hurricanes, and well, the U304 goes down as well. Some more units on the way. We've got both the S307 pack and the U307 uh, flak. This is a 20 mil on the back of the U304. Just going to try and prevent these hurricanes from doing too much work on this bottom side but uh, the Cromwell 5 joining the party is going to give Dinesta 
something that he can possibly use to kill off this Blumbeer in the future. Hurricanes don't have line of sight, I believe, onto the Panzer Grenadiers. They're just strafing at the same location. So a bit of a mistake there for Helobert to keep those Panzer Grenadiers in the same location. But I guess if he sort of used them to, or fell them back, basically, the Cromwell 6 uh, would get shots as they come out the backside of the tree line. So that probably wouldn't have been ideal. But here comes the Hurricanes strafing the S307 pack. Really good uh, chance there that the S307 pack gets killed by the Hurricanes because it, they, it is very low armor and it is open top so Hurricanes can definitely take advantage of that but with the U304 flak arriving it's going to help force these Hurricanes back although the fuel did a better job of that or lack of it. 259 going to be now backing off. Ammo storage hit did take away all of the 20mm auto cannon that it had like ammunition wise. Hands are going to feel are going to be smoking themselves off and trying to get out of there. The yeah, Alfkiller were spotted on the top side and taken care of. Panzerhabits are now getting involved up here with the Stralsi, trying to do as much damage as it can. But Hillrobert's definitely under a lot of pressure, and although he has the Blumbeer and the SJ7 pack on this bottom side, he's really going to have to find some one shot kills with the SJ7 pack right now to make a difference here. But if he can engage the Cromwell 5, uh, without engaging the Cromwell 6. That actually puts him in a very good position. So I'm surprised to not see him just have that on an attack move sooner. But is going to be going for the shots now. A87 also coming in. This has the four, five HE power bombs going for the Stuka dive. Great at just pinning tanks and allowing favorable engagements. So nice job there by Herr Robert to make use of that JU87. Panzer Grenadiers and the half track do manage to clean up another unit of Stralsi. And slowly but surely, the Nestor's infantry is kind of falling apart here. But the six pounder is still a very large threat, and that is going to be revealing itself by firing at the 259. And once it does so, well, the Brimbia will be looking for a kill there. Looks like that's on return fire though, so we can't, we're not going to see the actual attack onto the 259 just yet. I think uh, Donest is probably trying to wait to get a kill onto the Bumbia or even like an S the S07 pack or something. That would be absolutely ideal. So Panzer Grenadier is now continuing to pin down the Stralsi in the open. The Morris LRC is trying to do some damage, but due to that being a Bren gun, not really too much going on. S07 pack does get the crew wound onto the Cromwell 5. That's going to give it a clean second shot doesn't actually manage to hit with the second shot so now the Cromwell 5 will fall back out of range and that's a missed opportunity there for the SJ7 back. Now the Vilfax Bear for firing away once again. This hasn't really been hitting the mark though unfortunately for Hellobit. This six pounder is still very much alive and getting the job done but as it moves and then reveals itself again I'm sure Hellobit can try and target that directly. Although he's focusing on the left side of the forest there instead of the six pounder itself. Which would be a much better target in my opinion. Now the 259 did get killed on the bottom side here. I'm not sure if that was due to the six pounder or, or maybe the Cromwell 5 or Cromwell 6 on the bottom side here. But either way, job done. Gets rid of that 259. And uh, now leaves Herr Robert in a bit of a sticky spot. He really needs to kill this six pounder if he can. But that's going to require recon I think at this point. In order to basically spot it and, and give himself a clean uh, sort of way to push forwards. This stag count though is actually a really nice response here on the bottom side. He can use that at close range to kind of cut off any advance that Herobert would like to make. But with the pack 38 here has a great chance to find this kill. Does get the transmission damage, but under fire from a Cromwell 6, that's not going to be very helpful. Pack 38 has one more shot and uh, unfortunately is now going to be, be pinned down. Now Dinesta really needs to set an attack or fire position onto the same mark there. In the mid, Hellobit does manage to clean up some infantry. But currently we're sitting on a plus one for Dinesta and uh, so far I think he's done a good job of putting a lot of pressure onto the 21st Panzer in Phase A. It's definitely something that uh, you need to do against the 21st Panzer due to their units being quite expensive and also them not really having all the answers uh, to a very diverse division like the first Panzerna. 
The other thing that uh, is lacking with the 21st Panzer is infantry availability. So we're probably seeing like, well, we probably saw like all of the infantry that Herr Robert had in phase A. We're now into phase B, so that's not so much an issue. Um, but Donesta definitely did a lot of work where he could. The Pack 38 is still alive here, and that gives it the potential to get some nice ambushing shots from that position. But these Panzer Grenadiers are in trouble once again and are going to have to fall back this time around due to the advancing Straussi. AU87 going to be coming in for the bombing strike onto the Cromwell 6. Might dislodge it enough to get a shot in with the SG07 pack. But Dinesta has done a great job of having this Crusader AA Mark IIb in position. And now with the assistance of the Hurricane Mark IVs does shoot down the JU87. 2U304 Flax is going to be enough to force back the Hurricane Mark IVs for now and a two-star Focke Wolf 190 shows itself. So that's going to be pretty scary for Dinesta to uh, basically go up against in future. Pack 38 has now revealed itself firing at the Staghound. Isn't in line of sight with the Cromwell 6, so that can't really help the Staghound here. Cromwell 5 tries to get very aggressive onto these units but is it unsuccessful in doing so especially with the arrival of this panzer grenadier that really cuts off the road that it was going to use to advance this focke wolf should probably just get out of here since it is already suffering quite badly uh, with its morale staghound and morris lrc now pushing on this top side the panzer habits uh, has just been held back here I think that's mainly due to the six pounder being a threat. But with the accompaniment of the pioneers, I think Herobert can definitely do a lot of damage into these forest areas. The nests are already on the case, though, so with the Saperzi. So, going to be trying to match up there with that unit. Cromwell 6 does have a shot into the 257 half track at the moment. That is not very good because, again, there is potential for a kill there eventually if that does not fall back sooner than later. Do we have Dalsi actually kill off some of the Panzer Grenadiers that fell back and reveal themselves by doing so? So goodbye to Dinesta's recon. And we saw the Panzer Grenadiers get the surrender there onto another Polish infantry unit. The Pioneers moving through. The six pounder, how it has not been spotted yet is beyond me, but uh, is going to be taking a shot towards the boy to Sherman here. It does get an internal fragment with the first shot. Very nice indeed. Um, it's quite likely that that's actually going to hit because it is two star veterancy. But doesn't get the kill. Does get killed itself. So that's good for Herr Robert because he can now just get that reloaded with this Opal Blitz munition that's coming in anyway to reload the Fielderfag Furfer and the 257. The Pioneers take out the command in the forest here as well. That's fantastic. So Percy though making short work of these Panzer Grenadiers and there's no command on the side of Herr Robert either. So Sapersi with those flamethrowers can definitely do a lot of work and with the Firefly 1C coming in on the bottom side it one bangs the Brumbia and that goes down. What a very scary unit now for Herr Robert to deal with. He won't really have too much to fight off against a Firefly until Phase C uh, when he can get King Tigers. So Panzer Grenadiers and Pioneers continuing their push through the forest here. Just trying to, I think, flush out any units that are on the side of him. And that will therefore, once they're gone, allow the Panzer Habitzer to do its work. But as you can see, Cromwell 6 eventually took out the 257 in the mid here. And that's going to force all of these units now to fall back. Pack 38 though, lovely one shot into some of the Strelsi is going to take those out. But I just feel like Herr Robert is not trading as efficiently as he needs to in order to gain an advantage at this point in the game. And like with the loss of the bumper on the bottom side, it's like really a lot of points to lose to just like a one bang from a firefly. It was pretty lucky. I mean, this is a one, like a, a no veterancy firefly. Uh, but at the same time, it's just not ideal and puts Herr Robert in a very tough spot. Now these Strelsi are in a bad spot themselves, kind of come under a lot of MG fire. Double Hurricane on its way to challenge the Focke Wolf 190. Not entirely convinced that's the best route. 
especially with the help of any AA on the bottom side. But the Fokker Wolf is going to be forced to fall back. The Hurricane won't get onto the back of the Fokker Wolf, but does help pin down the Pack 38 and remove that as a threat. On the top side, Panzer Habits are now using HE on the Morris LRC since it's used up all of its AP shells. Pack 43 is on its way in the Multia there. I'd like to see one of those on the bottom side though, something that can really deal with the Firefly and the Wolverine. Bringing it to the top side, I think is, I guess maybe just a safety net. Pioneers, they're now being enclosed upon by multiple Strelsi here. I don't think that Donesta wants them to be there. And I guess um, what will happen is Herr Robert will end up, or Donesta will end up sacrificing one of his infantry squads but then he, this pioneer will just be outnumbered. And this one's probably going to die. And uh, that's a full squad taking the loss there, which is not ideal. SG07 pack does get a clean shot into the Wolverine, finds a transmission damage, which is very nice for Herr Robert. But he, you can see that he has lost now this forest area, and his lack of infantry availability is really starting to show. Because there's just so much on the side of Dinesta. And there's just like barely any on the side of Herr Robert now. And the Panzerpitzer does eventually kill the Morris LRC up here. Um, the Pack 43 now looking for shots onto the Stag Calm, but there go the Pioneers as they get pinned. U304 arriving with another Pioneer. It's going to be heading into the forest there. Stag Calm on its way. Boyter Sherman has been reloaded by the Opel Blitz now. Now the U304 Flax getting involved at close range. But with a Firefly on the case, that's not going to be a thing for too long. Firefly can just kill these U304 Flax nice and easy. Panzer Grenadiers though, finding one surrender onto a Strelzy squad. But yeah, there you go. Firefly does its job. This Firefly has been absolutely king. Really, really nice job. Oh, the Pioneers there. They take the flames from the Superzi. The grenade goes in the face of the Strelzi. And, well, that's the Pioneers gone once again. An unfavorable trade, really, for Herr Robert. Because losing a Pioneer and not even killing a Strelzi is, is really bad. Now, Marda 1 is trying to kind of hold this bottom side, but not really doing itself any favors, retreating in line of sight of the Firefly. Fortunate enough, though, that the unit does not get killed. But now Hurricanes in the mid going to be strafing this Marder 1. Again, potential for kills there. Staghound now going to be coming around the corner, taking some shots. The Marder's going to take time to try and turn around, and that's going to be a critical ammo explosion as it hits the one armor. The U-304... Black on the bottom side is now also dead, which opens up Hurricanes to strafe this bottom side as well. Pack 38, unlucky there, I feel, to not hit the mark. Does the second time round, but doesn't get a kill. Can it hit a third time? No, it cannot. The Cromwell 6 gets on target, and Dinist is very lucky there that that was a bounce at that range. Oh my. So now Wolverine has come into the top side. Sexton's going to be trying to pin the pack 43. That, that will enable the Wolverine and Staghound here to continue the push forwards. But you can see the Nests are just a little bit more concerned about pushing the rest of this infantry out of the tree lines here and currently happily sitting on a plus two. Far from over though, as we move into phase C, Herr Robert will have access to the King Tiger. And that may be able to do a lot of work in pushing back this bottom side against the Firefly and the Wolverine. The only issue that I do foresee is that Herr Robert won't have the infantry to sort of help the King Tiger advance uh, without the threat of it being flanked. The Pioneers here, uh, they're going to get off a grenade. The Sapirzi have actually ran out of ammunition, so the Pioneers getting in the way with that one. And Herr Robert finding himself a favourable trade for once. Hurricane Mark IV does come in for the strafing runs, actually run out of ammunition. And I'm surprised to see that the Nesta isn't being a bit more aggressive on this bottom side, but I guess the two star King Tiger is on its way. And that is going to certainly be 
tough to deal with. 19 front armor. Going to be more than enough to bounce plenty of firefly shots at max range. Can even bounce firefly shots at 900 meter range. The beauty of the King Tiger's front armor, at least. Here, Fight Fair, Fair. Going to be trying to do some morale damage here, I think, onto some of these tanks. Oh, that Wolverine is going to end up in line of sight of the King Tiger. Oh, boom, one shot. Three star King Tiger. Barely ever misses. Gets the job done there. That is a 7 accuracy main gun. 3 star veteran C, 22 AP. Absolutely disgusting. But, if Dinesta plays this right, keeps his Firefly close to this tree line, he's going to make it very difficult for the Königsteiger to push forwards without the support of the infantry. So, Herr Robert forced to bring that in now. And, depending on how Dinesta plays this, he might be okay. But Herr Robert... Obviously a pretty decent player, very decent player, and um, if he supports these Panzer Grenadiers, brings them in from the top side of the tree line, he can try and get the Panzerfaust onto these targets, and if he does not, then they'll likely reveal themselves to the Königsteiger, but I feel like this is uh, getting a bit risky now, Königsteiger getting very close to the Firefly, and the Firefly... It could probably just sneak around the edge of this tree line and go for a shot into the King Tiger. And then probably reverse actually before the King Tiger even aims. So that's what I'd like to see from Dinesta. But you can see the U304s putting on a lot of pressure. They're coming in hot. I'm really hoping these are Panzer Grenadiers and not Pioneers. Because if they're Panzer Grenadiers, it makes things very difficult. If they're Pioneers, then... I guess it doesn't really matter. But the Pioneers actually deployed in a very decent spot here to take out the Strelsey and clean out this uh, forest. And the Strelsey also in a very good position to take on the Cromwell 6. So I'm going to get into range of the Cromwell 6. Do get the Panzerfaust on target. Track will destroyed is going to be enough. And just the threat of this Panzer Grenadier will surely force the Firefly back. Going to force an engagement against this Königsteiger. I think the best bet at this point is just to have the Firefly drive around that tree line and go for a shot. But I think the Nesta doesn't really have sight line onto this SG07 pack, so maybe it's not necessarily as good an idea. Two 17 pounders, though, are in the way of this King Tiger. That could end badly. Nice shot on the top side, though. Looks like the Bofors went down. Probably to the Panzerhabitzer, I would assume. Or it must have been the, actually the Pack 43 there. Nice job indeed. Oh, the Firefly. It got internal fragmented by the last Panzerfaust of the Panzer Grenadiers. And that is surely dead. Firefly goes down. Wow. Great job there by Herr Robert. Brings in the Panzer Grenadiers exactly where he needs them to be. Fantastic job indeed. And what sort of range are we looking at here? Roughly 900 meters. So 17 pounder is going to struggle. This one maybe not so much. This is very risky. This this 17 pounder. Oh, driver wounded is all it's going to be. The machine gun surely going to pin down that 17 pounder. Now the Focke Wolf 190 coming in as well for the strafing run. Holy. That was unfortunate for Dinesta. I thought he was going to find a kill there. Instead only finds driver wound and, and that is not enough. Focke Wolf 190 is going to be hit very hard by the two-star Hurricane Mark IV. Gets shot down, so that's the Focke Wolf dealt with. But a Flak 88 is on the case. It's going to force back this Hurricane Mark IV with its rockets, not allow it to pin the Königsteiger. Pioneers are taking a lot of damage from the Crusader A Mark II B here, but as you can see, it has actually run out of ammunition. 88 and King Tiger now taking on these 17-pounders. Looks like one is going to go down here, unless the 88 chooses to fire, of course, at the aircraft instead. Oh, that King Tiger didn't actually find the kill, even though it got a direct hit. There is a possibility that that occurs. And, wow. Hey, Robert's done a pretty decent job so far, but this is a one health AT gun. Cannot be underestimated. 
Also, the King Tiger is now showing side armor, so if the 17 pounder recovers, this is actually a very scary opportunity for this 17 pounder to find a kill. Oh no. Oh, it missed. Thank God for that. <laughs> Robert probably would have hated himself for a very long time if he allowed that to happen. But either way, uh, job done. 17 pounder goes down. No more one health AT gun to, to worry about. Pioneers take out another infantry squad in the tree line up there. Pack 43 forced back on the top side by the Sexton. This 17 pounder is still a problem. Going to have to find something to deal with that sooner than later. There's 13 minutes, 40 seconds left on the clock. And Herr Robert's going to need probably a plus two or even a plus three at this point in order to win. So he's got to get a move on. I've got to find a way to clean out the 17 pounder. And then push through really hard with this King Tiger. There is a Firefly 5C now, though, now on the field for the Donesta. Going to be using that to hold back the train of units from Herr Robert. And another 17 pounder has joined the crew. Potential there for either of these 17 pounders to kill off the Königstiger. But this one, busy missing the Marder 1 there, actually revealing its location by doing so. It does find the kill. But now the Panzer Habitza Lorraine is joining the party and going to be covering the Königstiger against these 17 pounders as it advances. There is Spear Troop running ahead, so. Herr Robert does have the recon necessary. Going to be moving up the Königstiger here to clean up this Crusader A8 Mark IIb. 17 pounder is going to be able to get the shot though. Oh, again, side armor. There was a potential for a side armor shot there. <laughs> I'm almost feeling that Tedesta is unlucky that he hasn't found these kills. Hurricane Mark IV. Going to be engaging the Panzerhabitzer on the top side. Doesn't find the kill, but does force it back for the time being. Königsteiger has been crew knocked out. That Panzer Habitzer Lorraine really needs to start firing sooner than later down here. But the Königsteiger going to do the job. So Panzer Habitzer has the number of the other 17 pounder, and I think that is perfectly okay. This King Tiger probably wants to fire position towards the 17 pounder now as the Spear Troop and other infantry continue to move forwards. That would be ideal. But Dinesta is certainly putting a lot of pressure up here on this top side. And that's not good because Dinesta is currently keeping himself at the plus one. And that just makes it harder and harder for Herr Robert to come back in this game. As Dinesta continues to count points towards his victory. And Herr Robert still hasn't made the ground back. Koenigstagger now pushing forwards very aggressively. There's two fireflies, however, on this bottom side. It's going to be quite difficult to deal with. I like how Herr Robert, though, has invested in these AT-8s. They're going to be very good at stopping those hurricane rocket strikes onto the Königsteiger, allowing it to take clean engagements where it can. U-304 trying to make some ground here. Could probably try and push even further, but these are just pioneers. Not going to be able to do anything to the firefly, so I don't want to be walking into the face of that. 17 pounder has come through the tree line on the top side. I think one shot bailed out the boy to Sherman. Gets the second shot kill. Back 43 under fire from the Streltsy on that top side. Spear Throop moving down to the bottom. 17 pounder should get spotted if the Spear Throop continue. 17 pounder going to reveal itself shooting at the STK of Z7. That should give a target for the Panzer Habit to Lorraine because the 17 pounder on this tree line has been taken care of. It's only this one left. Herr Robert needs to clean that up sooner than later as he is losing control on this top side. I guess one way that you could stop this top side from falling apart is just bringing a King Tiger up here as well. And it's more than likely that he has two cards of Konex Tigers moving into phase C. Although it, it is a 1v1, so maybe he won't. But either way. Bringing in a second Koenig Saga would be a good choice at this point, I feel. Hans Habitza looking for the shot onto the 17 pounder. It's going to be a second Koenig Saga for the mid. Okay. I guess if he comes down from this location, it's not too bad. He can use the orchards to his advantage. So Spade Thrupp are managing to push across the open here, but the Firefly surely going to open up onto them and uh, try and take them out. That's going to reveal the location of one Firefly. 
There is another Firefly further down. These Panzer Grenadiers don't have any Panzerfaust ammo. So that Firefly has been spotted as well. This Koenigstiger now in a tough spot. Because if these Fireflies are coordinated properly, then a side shot is almost inevitable. And since they are both one-star veterancy, there's a good chance of a kill occurring. Koenigstiger... Looking for the kill onto the Staghound there. Hurricane trying to pin down the Flak 41. Probably to enable the Hurricane Mark IV with the rockets to come in and do the job. But that 17 pounder taking a shot at close range. Oh, he's going to get taken out. Unfortunately, unfortunate that he missed at that range. But uh, that's going to be one Firefly taken care of. Nice use of the Vilfax Bertha there to force back the Firefly. But I'm not convinced there's enough time to win this game for Herobert now. So Firefly still sitting in a very precarious position for Herobert there. But as it comes under fire from the Panzerhabit Celerain and maybe even the Vilfax Verpa comes over and gets involved. There's a potential for the Firefly to be forced back. And that will make things very, very difficult indeed. But yeah, this Koenigstiger just needs to zip up to this top side, stop the advance of the Firefly and the Staghound. And then possibly break back up here because there is a distinct lack of units. Like if the Koenigstiger pops all of the armor, just there'd be barely anything left. And with the amount of half tracks there, these Strelsi don't really stand a chance. Firefly, though, still being a nuisance, is going to take out the U304. Pioneers and Panzer Grenadiers are going to continue their march across open ground. King Tiger's still stuck killing these Strelsi squads. Hurricane does come in and rocket one of the U-304s, just trying to pick off some of those half-tracks. It's SCO-7 pack cleaning up one of the half-tracks in the mid as well. Sexton trying to pin down the 88s and to open up the air so that this King Tiger can be strafed or rocketed or whatever. So the King Tiger has arrived here. Can it find a kill onto this Wolverine? does find the track will damage and as that tries to retreat it will take another shot unless the staghound is targeted instead but it is not yeah robert make sure that it continues to target the wolverine staghound now backing up very close to these panzer grenadiers looks like the panzerfaust is going to come out there does get the track will damage cuts off a lot of the territory on the top side Ed Robert surely going to be looking towards a plus two very shortly, but it's not going to be enough. The Nest is still going to win in six minutes and 20 seconds. But I think Ed Robert in this game, he held quite well in phase A. He didn't lose too much, but I, fe I feel like the sort of engagements were just enough in favor of the Nesta, and it made it very awkward for Ed Robert in the late game to come back so much. This boy to Sherman though, lovely choice here, has the potential to really do a lot of damage to this Firefly, especially if the Firefly is under pressure from the Panzerhabit to Lorraine. The Firefly is going to be backing up. Koenigstiger is still killing infantry. I guess the thing that Herobert does need at this point is just more infantry, whether it's recon or whatever, just so that the Koenigstiger can move forwards more aggressively, because for the longest time on this bottom side, the Firefly's only really been the real threat down here. And that's now going to get bombed by the JU-87. The boy to Sherman will be looking for the engagement after that, so good job by Herr Robert to make that happen. Finds a critical ammo explosion, job done. Koenigstiger wants to get a move on now. The so five minutes left on the clock. Is a plus three even going to be enough? Probably not. And I feel like the game has just kind of fallen away from Herr Robert. So although he is absolutely dominating with his King Tiger on the bottom side, it's not quite enough. And the one health AT gun there, killing off one of the Panzerhabitzers. Can it kill the Koenigstiger as well? It does get the internal fragments. What did I tell you guys? See, so these one health AT guns, they're too good. They're too damn good. King Tiger goes down. That removes any threat the Hell Robot had on the top side of the map. Now allows the Sherman 5 to 
continue a push up there alongside the stack hound, but stack hound's been internal fragmented. Phoenix Tiger really needs to just find a shot onto the sexton, I feel. You could just continue to fast move. He's killed so many 17 pounders. And at this point, he really doesn't have anything to lose. He's got to find this extra territory. Otherwise, he just straight up loses the game. So, speed troop going to be coming in to assist. More infantry has arrived, which is good. Um, 257, currently mortaring his own infantry. I think that's just because there was an infantry squad here and the pioneers engaged them. 259, going to be getting a close range shot into the stag count. We'll probably get the kill there if it drove even closer. And here comes the hurricanes once again. The AT-8 should be able to help force those back. But I'm very surprised that Herobert isn't just going balls to the walls right now and just fast moving everything forwards. Because I reckon that, you know, when you come to a point where there's three minutes left on the clock and you need to find like a plus four or like plus three, plus four, you may as well just fast move everything forwards and hope for the best. A boy to Sherman versus Sherman 5. Basically the same vehicle. Which one's going to win? Transmission damage onto the Boyd Sherman is not very nice. Sherman 5 is going to be able to get another shot on target. Let's get the kill. German crew just not as efficient in a Sherman as the Polish. And it looks like Herobert's just kind of waiting for his loss right now. 2 minutes and 24 seconds left on the clock. We find a few kills here and there to just up his KD a little bit, but not going to help him win the game at the end of the day. 63% territory, not going to be enough. U304 coming in with another AT gun on the top side. Panzer Grenadiers might be able to find the kill here onto the Sherman 5. They don't. That's devastating because now the machine gun's going to surely pin the Panzer Grenadiers before they fire another Panzerfaust. And that's going to be a surrendered Panzer Grenadier. Never mind. Maybe not. The Panzer Grenadier is getting pinned down before they could kill the Sherman. It's not ideal. Now the Pack 38 going to be moving into the tree line surely gets the job done. Such a close range shot. There we go, engine destroyed. Meanwhile on the bottom side, mu 109 g coming in to cover the JU-87. JU-87 is bombing the Sexton, going to be forcing that to fall back. mu 109 g goes down though. Sherman 5 now dead on the top side, 259 goes down as well. All the action now occurring. Noble Blitz Munitions is uh, for some reason right in the middle of the map here. Does find a plus three towards the end here, Herobert. The JU-87 does go down. I think finally units are starting to be aggressive. But one minute left on the clock, it's not going to be enough. If he was ticking like a plus three earlier, I'm not sure if there was a chance either. I don't know, it's really hard to work out sometimes. Because at some point in the game, regardless of whether you get a plus three or a plus four or a plus five, you're always playing catch up. And you can never really get to a position unless the, the other player lets you, uh, where you can sort of overtake that many points, like 1,909. It's not great. Yeah, here they go. Now the fast move from the King Tiger forwards. But uh, 13 seconds left on the clock. There is a possibility that Herr Robert lost, tra lost track of time. But either way, uh, not going to be enough. And congratulations to the Nesta to win this crazy first game, honestly. First game of the quarterfinals uh, against Herr Robert. But this is a best of three. So it's not over yet. Herr Robert does have a chance to come back in game two. And that's what we'll be looking out for. So, in the end, Herr Robert did get the positive KD with 3,370 kills to 3,065 losses, but very kill, very close nonetheless. Um, 
in terms of the kills early on, most of them went in favor of the first Panserna and Danista. This Firefly came in and popped that Brimbeer, which was a very nice clean shot. In the late game, however, not too much done. This is the one health AT gun that took out the Koenigsteiger. It took out Boyd to Sherman as well. And the Sherman 5s, they didn't do too much. Let's have a look at how many kills this Koenigsteiger got. Oh yes, that's what I'm talking about. Firefly 1C, Firefly 5C. Took out the Sexton at the end, took out Wolverine. Very nice indeed. Koenigsteiger on the top side, cleaned up the Wolverine and the Stag Hound. Two units that I thought that, they ne that it needed to. And uh, yeah, having the Koenigsteiger up on that top side definitely gave a lot of potential for the Hare Robert to make ground back very quickly. But in the end, didn't really come to fruition. And Anesta had done enough in the early to mid game to get the job done. Pretty unlucky though with some of those side shots on the 17 pounds as well. But it is what it is. Either way, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Um, hopefully you are thrilled that another tournament is on the channel. I'll be continuing uh, with the rest of the quarterfinals after I have done this one. Plenty of good players to look forward to. I hope to see some new strategies because there's many players that are great at the game that I don't often cast. So we have names like Fussel and Katie Laker and Vohati and um, Player and Walther to look forward to. So lots of big names. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it though. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.